Okay, friends. I hope you were able to do it. If you're not able to do it, let's see how to do this. So, there is there are 100 supplies of Drosophila from Varanasi. They were tested for alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme and which has two kinds of allele one is S one is F then we have this population data which is SSS 66 SF is 20 FF is 40 right So what would be the genotypic frequency of SS, number of SS individuals, divided by 100, this gives us 0 0.66, SF would be 20 divided by 100, this comes to 0 0.2, FF is 14 out of 100 this comes to 0 0.14 what is this this is also p square what is this this is 2pq and what is this this is q square right now let's see what is the frequency of single s le so what would be the s as we know it would be SS plus half of SF. Why half? Because half of it is S, half of it is F, and that's why it is half SF divided by total population. This comes to 66 plus in the bracket 20 by 2, that is that comes to 10, 76 by 100, and that is 0 0.76. This is the frequency of SLE, which is P. Similarly, we will find the frequency of another allele, which is F. So, what would be F? FF plus half of SF, because half of it is S, half of it is F, divided by total population, and that comes to 14 plus this comes as 10 and finally what we get is 0 0.24 0 0.24 this we so this is our p this is our q what would be p square 0 0.76 this would be roughly 0 0.57 What is q square? This is p square. And what is q square? q square would be roughly 0 0.05. Now what is q square here? 0 0.14. Here q square is 0 0.05. Here p square is 0 0.06. And here p square is 0 0.57, which means what? That this population does not follow Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. We'll see the reason, but for general understanding, one of the assumptions of Hardy Weinberg equation is that the population. size should be large. How much large? Almost infinite, infinitesimally large. Okay, let's see the next.
question. Again, pause this video, try to understand the question, try your best. I am sure you will be able to do it, but if you don't able to do it, don't worry, just resume the video. Okay, let's see. So here there is an ability to test PTC okay, among a population of 215 individuals in a place called as Vancouver. We have 150 which of 150 individual that can taste PTC and 65 of them could not. As it is already mentioned that it is governed by a dominant allele called as capital T, which means what? That the population which can test will be comprised of both homozygous as well as heterozygous and so we have 150 out of 215 of these. Whereas those individuals who cannot test this, sorry, the individual those cannot test this would be homozygous recessive and there would be 65 out of 215 population. What is this also? This is a Q square. And so Q square is 65 by 25. So to find out Q, what we can do is, we can underroot this. If we underroot this, what we will get is the value of Q, which is 0 0.54. Now from this, what we can do is, using this equation, P plus Q is equal to 1, we can find out what is P. P would be 1 minus 0 0.54. P is equal to 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.46. In this way, we can calculate capital T and small t. This is for capital T and this is for small t. Right. I hope you are enjoying and let's take this question. Again you can pause the video at this moment, try it yourself and then resume the video so that I can explain. Welcome back friends. So we were doing this problem. Uh, this problem was adapted from CSIR exams. Um, so let's see. So the question is about that there are there is an autosomal recessive allele which is Q, and its frequency is one in fifty. What would be the frequency of the carrier? These are the options given for the answer. So let's see what are the carriers. Carriers are basically heterozygous. Right? These heterozygous we can figure out by 2 P Q. Right? So if we know Q we can find out P and so we can find out 2PQ. Let's see how. So P plus Q is equal to 1. P would be 1 minus 1 by 50. So the P is 49 by 50. Carriers will be 2PQ that is 2 into 49 by 50 into 1 by 50. This comes to 2 into 1 by 50 by making 
an assumption that 49 is equal to 50. Yeah, this assumption you are making because this is already given in the multiple choice that we can take an assumption and we can just uh, take a approximate value. So the answer is 1 by 25. Okay. Let's see the other problem. An autosomal disorder has a population frequency of 1 by 40,000. The carrier frequency is therefore, again, this question is from CSIR exam. And uh, you pause the video, make an effort, and then resume the video to see the process. Okay, so what is given here? It is given autosomal recessive disorder, which means a phenotype, right? So this frequency 1 by 40,000 is what? T square. Remember the TT in the population, the autosomal recessive, and this is the disorder frequency. And so we have, we know what is Q square. So we, from Q square, we can find out Q, from Q we can find out P. And when we know P, again, what is the way to find this out? It's 2PQ. So Q will find out from Q square, then P will find out from Q, and hence we'll find out the frequency of heterozygous or the carriers in the population. Let's see how. So Q squared is equal to 1 by 40,000, which means Q is under root of it, which gives us 1 by 200. So P would be P plus Q is equal to 1. So P is equal to 1 minus 1 by 200. That comes to 199 by 200. And the carrier is 2PQ. If we multiply again 2PQ, what we are going to get is... 2 into 1 by 200. Again, we make an assumption here that 199 is equal to 200. This assumption we are doing because uh, we already have an option, answer given as a choice. So the final answer is 1 by 100. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this as well as you have understood Hardy Weinberg. Uh, equilibrium, its concept. Um, there are some assumptions also with the hardy member. So as I already mentioned, the population size should be large. The population size should be infinitely large because large population produce large sample, sample size is more, the success of gametes would be High. There should be no mutation. There should be no migration from the population. And there should be no natural selection. What is natural selection? That an individual has a reproductive advantage over the other individual. So this should not happen. So no individual should have reproductive advantage over the another individual because of its genotype. In next phase of hardy weinberg what we'll see is what if there is mutation then how we will calculate allelic frequency what if there is migration then what would be allelic frequency what if there is natural selection then there would be how how we will try to understand how we can figure out what is the allelic frequency also in cases of polygenes and multiple alleles no you all know uh, multiple alleles abo blood group we'll come to add to this in the next video thank you for watching stay tuned you can write your
questions in the comment section and I will try to address those as soon as I get the time. Thank you. Thank you so much.